Welcome to Granny's Country Cooking, and I am Granny, and I am so excited to have you with us today. We are making a special recipe that I posted on Instagram and Facebook, and it's called Cream of Broccoli Soup with or without cheese, and this is especially for a friend named Karen, and I've had many of you asking for this recipe. At the same time, we are going to have a companion video that makes buttery garlic biscuits that goes with the soup deliciously. So we will have lots of fun today, and I will get everything set up in just a minute, and I'll be right back with you. Thank you. Okay, welcome back, and we are getting ready to get set up. We're going to see what goes into this delicious soup, but the first thing I want to do is show you uh, my chicken feed apron. This is a pioneer type apron, and I will explain more in a little bit. I have some of you writing, asking questions about it, and I'll explain more in just a little bit. But now we're going to get started on the ingredients going into the soup. Okay, now this is not the largest pan, but it isn't a tiny pan either, but it is the mid-size, I guess you could say, and this is going to feed one to two to three people, uh, maybe one or two people for several days. This is the size recipe that we will be making today. Now, if you want to make a larger batch of this soup, just double everything that I will show you here in just a minute. Okay, we'll put this up. Now, what I will be doing in just a minute is getting the veggies chopped to go into the soup. Now, uh, first I'll show you the ingredients. The ingredients will be garlic, at least two large cloves are the equivalent. Then carrots. We will be chopping them pretty small and at least three extra big ones or six small ones kind of like this and promise you it's delicious. Then we'll be using one large onion and I want to show you something that I learned many many years ago that to cut off the top this is the root end. This is the end that makes you cry and do all crazy things. Now, most people will just peel off this brown outer layer. What I found out was this inner skin under the brown layer is also tough. And if you use it, it will be rubbery in your soup and it won't blend and be softened and cook right and it won't be really that good in your soup. So if you can peel your onion and what we're going to do is peel it down to the root. Then we're going to keep peeling and peeling. Then we're going to chop it up into small sizes until you get down to about right here. And hopefully you won't have a lot of tears until you get close to the root system. That's where the tears are. So as you can tell, I'm not crying tears right now. So we are going to be cutting the onion. And as you can see, we have the brown and we pull back the clear under the brown, the white under the brown. Okay, now the next ingredients that we have is the broccoli, of course. And we live way out in the country, and it's hard to go to the store every time I need one certain item or something. So what I do is I buy the frozen broccoli, and I've tried many different brands, and the more inexpensive brands just are not that good. I've ruined big pots of soup, and it just makes me so sad. But what I found out is bird's eye is the best that I've used. And what I do is that I take out equivalent to a small bag of broccoli and let it thaw before we're cooking. I buy it in the book, so I take out the same equivalent amount. Okay, that's our broccoli. Now, the next thing that we will have in the soup is a chicken broth. Delicious chicken broth gives us more nutrition and makes it just creamy and delicious. Okay, now the next thing is that we can use either kinds of milk. Now, 
the recipe is wanting us to use heavy whipping cream, which is out of this world. And if you're making this size and you want to use it, use a, the small container of whipping cream and pour it into with the chicken broth, and I'll show you in a minute. And then you will stir it up and we'll make a, a thickening agent here in a little while. But if you have someone in your family that has milk problems and has cholesterol problems, which in my family I do, I use this and it is magnificent. It is delicious. And what it is is reduced fat, lactose-free milk. And I use this milk instead of the whipped cream, and it is delicious. Okay, now the next thing that the recipe calls is for a stick of butter. And to use half of it with the veggies when we're steaming it in a minute, or and then the other half with the thickening. Now, again, with the cholesterol problem, if you don't want to use the butter, it still tastes delicious, and I use olive oil or vegetable oil. Now, I don't necessarily measure it. I pour it into the pan, and we'll be doing that in just a minute, and it works perfect with the thickening agent, too. So, therefore, we are cutting down cholesterol from two major things. Now, the cheese part comes in the form of grated cheese. And I'll tell you when and how much to add to the recipe. This recipe, I'm not gonna add the cheese, but yes, you can. And I use any kind of grated cheese that you like. Whatever is your taste, you can use about a cup of grated cheese into the soup. And I'll show you when that, that kind of time would come. But for my family, there's some that can't use a lot of cheese and don't really like it that much. So what I do is I have the grated cheese on the table and we decorate the top of the hot soup and it melts down into it for those who love the cheese. Okay, let me see if we've got everything listed, almost. Now the seasoning is magnificent and I use Laurie's seasoning and you can get the smaller jars in any grocery store normally mostly but i get this in bulk from sam's because i use so much of it and we will be using a couple of tablespoons in this in just a minute and i'll show you how okay so we've got our lawyer's seasoning we have chicken broth we have our carrots our garlic and our onions we have our broccoli thawing. We have our milk ready to go, our olive oil ready to go, and we will get started in just a minute. And what I'll do is I'll get all of these veggies chopped off, chopped up into little small pieces, and we will move the camera over to the stove where you can see how we're adding it and steaming it and flavoring it. Okay, we'll see you in just a minute. Thank you. Hey. We are ready to start steaming our veggies. I have all of the veggies chopped and ready to go. The garlic, the onion, and that's a lot of onion. I didn't realize one big onion make that much, but that's a good amount. And then the carrots. So we are going to get ready to put them into the pan. First, we turn the burner on to about medium-ish. We don't want to burn it or have it go so slow it won't work. So, okay, we're going to turn this burner on to about medium. Now, I'm going to use the olive or the vegetable oil, as I told you. And as you know, all the bottles tend to drip a little bit. Now, probably if you were to measure, I would say maybe a couple of tablespoons. But I've made this recipe so often, I know about how much to put in there. So we'll wipe our little drip off. All right. Now, we are going to put in here, we're going to use a nice big spoon. I love wooden spoons. Uh, but you know, one thing I found out is that wooden spoons retain the flavor of what you used it for. So I have separate spoons for candy and 
and soups and things like that. So this one is my good soup spoon. So now we're going to kind of stir the oil around a little bit and get the, the, the ground covered, the floor covered. Now I may have to add a little bit more, but I may not have to. So, okay, we are going to get that kind of stirred around. Now I'm going to add the garlic. And that was too large or the equivalent. Okay. Then I'm going to add the one large onion chopped up. And it doesn't have to be tiny because the onion is going to be so soft it blends in with the soup. And you won't really realize it's there. It's just the good flavor. Okay, we want to get all of the onion out. We're going to start stirring it around a little bit with the garlic. Now, a lot of recipes, you kind of fry it together, which is wonderful. But in this recipe, you really don't have to. We're going to steam it mostly. Okay, now we're going to add the carrots. And here are the beautiful carrots, chopped up into little tiny sizes. Excuse me, delicious. I love organic carrots. They have a different flavor totally. Okay, all of our carrots are in here while I'm munching. Now we're going to stir this around a little bit. Got an onion up there. And we're going to kind of coat. Now what we're going to do is put the seasoning. This is Laurie's seasoning that I showed you all ago, Laurie's. Now first we're going to work with one tablespoon. And then later, when the soup is almost finished, we'll add enough to your taste, to what you would like. And if you can hear, the oil is already sizzling. That was one tablespoon. Now, we are going to stir this around, get it well, well flavored. And in a minute, this house is going to smell wonderful. Oh, it makes my family come out of the out of the background wondering what I'm cooking. Okay. I have two little fur babies that always try to help me when I'm cooking in case I drop little pieces or something. And today you may hear them in the background, but I'm I'm having to kind of close the door for them because they tend to bark and get in the way. So here we go. I'm stirring it around, and this seasoning tends to give it kind of a, a golden coloring. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to steam this, not actually fry it, but steam it until all the vegetables are totally tender, till you can just bite right into the carrot, or they just kind of fall. They're really, really soft, and it may take anywhere from... 10 to 15 minutes so we're going to put the lid on totally check your burner make sure it's not up too high and you may want to stir it occasionally and then i will get back with you when they are steamed okay we'll be back in just a minute thank you okay we're back and it didn't take very long maybe 10 minutes to steam and let me show you how beautiful Woo! you can see that steam coming up and the carrots and the onions and garlic are, are golden and beautiful and soft and tender and smelling wonderful. Oh, I'm hungry already. Okay, now what we're going to do is this is where we pour the chicken broth, the whole container, into the soup. And it does tend to splatter, so be kind of careful. We're going to pour it. You might be able to hear the splat, the sputtering and the sizzling. I love to cook. It is so much fun. As you can tell, during the off minutes, uh, I always have a little soapy bucket with bleach in it, and I wash up things as I go along, and then I don't have a big messy kitchen when I'm finished. Okay, that's the whole carton. Now... We stir this a little bit and make sure that if there's anything kind of stuck a little bit to the bottom, we stir that. 
and stir that around and make sure it's all kind of coming undone. Now the amount of milk that you want to put in and today I'm making it cholesterol free so I'm using the lactose free two two let's see two percent milk fat and this is what I'm going to put it in. The amount that you put into these pans will be about two-thirds. Leave about this much from the top because you will be adding broccoli and other things to it. Okay, so we are going to add, and I will show you, go slow so it doesn't splash on you. Now this will not be thick yet. We will make the thickening in just a little while after this is cooked. Okay, now if you can tell it is about maybe two inches from the top. That will give you room to add more veggies. Now what we want to do is you want to turn the burner up just a little bit. And we're going to bring it to a soft boil. Not a boiling, crazy boiling, but a soft boil on the top. And then we're going to turn the burner down a little bit and let it simmer for 30 minutes. What that does, it gets the flavor into the chicken broth and the milk from the veggies that are in there. So we are going to let that simmer, get to a boil first, and then simmer soft boil for about 30 minutes. So we will get that started. And you might want to watch this fairly close because it may tend to boil pretty quick. So what I like to do is to leave my lid just a little bit so I can kind of glance in there to make sure it's not boiling crazy, boiling over on the stove. So let's turn it up just a little bit. I think it's right about where we need it right now. That's kind of medium. So we're going to watch it and we'll set the timer. I have a little timer here. And we are going to set it for 30 minutes, and we will be back with you. Thank you. Okay, uh, while we are letting our soup simmer for a few more minutes, I told you I would mention about my chicken feed apron. And in the pioneer days, the ladies didn't have very many everyday dresses. And what they did to protect those dresses was they wore a large apron to totally cover the dress. And they were as long as the dress, and they were all the way around as the dress. And they went all the way around, and most of them either crisscrossed or some type of a backing on them. And the reason why they wore these is to protect what they had. As well, it was like a uh, like a uniform in a way because they would cook with wood stoves. They would work really hard. They did their laundry out with a, uh, with a fire and a big kettle of boiling water. And they did their laundry with a lot of hard work for them, either on the ranch or on the farm. And the reason why they call them chicken feed is because you could take the big apron and you could hold it up like this and fill your apron full of chicken feed. Then you go out and you feed the chickens. And at the same time, you can collect the eggs to take them back to the house in your little apron. And so I love my apron. I've had it for many, many years. Uh, I, as you can tell, it's almost totally worn out, but I'm still wearing it. And many of you has, have asked about this apron, so I just wanted to explain it to you. And now we'll be back in a minute when our soup is finished. Thank you. Okay, as you can see, our soup has been simmering beautifully. I'm going to take the lid off for right now. We will stir it some, and we will have that beautiful, delicious stirring soup. If you need to add a little bit more liquid, you could always add more milk or chicken broth. Now, the next step that we want to do is we want to add the broccoli, whether it is fresh. This would be equivalent to one whole uh, head of broccoli that you trim and get all of the rough edges off and get ready to cook. 
or one bag of frozen broccoli that has been thawed and ready to go. And this is bird's eye. I love the brand because I've never had a bad piece or any of the hard pieces left in there as I have other brands. So we are going to add this broccoli to the soup. Be very careful. It will splash on you if you're not careful. Okay. Now uh, you can cut the broccoli up into tiny pieces if you want or you can leave them large like this and the reason why I leave them large is because they tend to boil and get smaller and kind of break apart so right now we are going to add the broccoli we're stirring it all up and I want you to see how beautiful this is. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Now we will bring it back to a low boil and we will boil it for 15 minutes. Then we will make our thickening and I'll show you how to do that. Now right now it's absolutely beautiful. You can see the carrots, the onions, and the broccoli. So we're going to cook this and let it boil. You bring it to a boil and then boil it for 15 minutes. So we're going to cover this up, leave it open a little bit, check our burner, maybe get it a little bit hotter. And once it boils, we'll time it for 15 minutes and then we will be back. Thank you. Okay, our soup has been boiling now for 15 minutes. And this is with the garlic in there and the, all of the veggies, the onions and the broccoli is all in there. And now the broccoli is very gently soft and yet it's still in the large hunks. Now we are going to make our thickening and I can tell that some of the liquid has boiled away a little bit. So I'm going to put more milk into this to raise it up just a little bit. So we'll have our amount of, of liquid that we want. Let me get the milk. Okay, now we are going to add just a little bit more milk. And we are going to add enough to get up to the top of that line where it has kind of steamed and boiled away a little bit. And if you are at home making this soup, your house smells wonderful right now. Oh, it is luscious. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make the thickening. Now a lot of chefs and people call it roux and I believe it's spelled R-O-U-X. What it is, is you're making a, uh, on the stove, this is a little tiny, I love cast iron. This is a little tiny cast iron. We're going to make our thickening in here and it'll be semi-cooked and flavored. So we'll get that done. Now this is where you would use the other half of the butter if you want the butter. It does taste wonderful. But I am going to use the olive oil or the vegetable oil and I will pour in, since I'm used to doing this recipe, uh, I'm going to pour in approximately an eighth of a cup or a fourth of a cup. So I'm going to pour this in just a little bit. Let me get the little jar. And we will turn our burner on. And we want it on about medium. We're going to let this continue to simmer and to just gently uh, cook while it's, it's heating. And then I added probably an eighth of a cup maybe of oil or a fourth of a cup. Now what I'm doing is adding flour, just regular flour. And this is a fourth of a cup measure. And of course, when you're cooking, make sure your hands are nice and clean so that when you're getting your fingers into the food, it won't be getting a lot of 
things into it. Okay, now this is going to go into the oil and we're going to heat it. Now I have a little whisk that I absolutely love, this tiny little whisk. It's got a long handle and it makes it easy to use. Now we're going to add the flour to this. We may need a little bit more flour. We're going to check and see. Now the consistency of what we want in this thickening, or roux, if you want to call it that, is a kind of a thick paste. So that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to need a little bit more flour to make it that consistency. Now if you were using the butter, you would let the butter melt, and then you would add your flour. Now I'm going to add just enough to make it the consistency that I want. And I will show you here in just a little bit what we're wanting. Now we're going to add this to the soup in just a minute, but it needs a little bit more. Now this thickening is going to add to the soup. It will stir it up a lot and it's going to make this, this soup not a runny liquid, but a thickened cream soup. That's what we're wanting. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit more. And a while ago I said uh, no cholesterol, but the milk does have a little bit, but it doesn't have uh, as much as it would if we had used the whipped cream and the real butter. Okay. Now that is about the consistency that we want, and I will show you better. I'll get my little pot holders here. Always use pot holders. Please don't burn your hands. Now this is about the consistency that we want. Now we're going to cook this for about two to three minutes and kind of give it a, a toasty flavor. Now when you're making gravy, you want to cook it until it's about the color of peanut butter. But when you're, you're making this, you, you don't have to have it that color. You just cook it just for a little while. And when you're cooking it this way, you're getting rid of that old pasty taste, I guess. And so that's what we're doing. We're going to cook it until it's just about there. And I'm going to get this soup turned up just a little bit more. And this is absolutely beautiful. And in a few minutes after we make our biscuits, then we're going to sit down and taste it and eat, enjoy some. So we are going to let this get a little bit hotter. And do you see that this is bubbling? I hope you can see. I don't have an overhead camera yet, but maybe one of these days I will. And it's getting bubbly. We just want to get it a little bit browner. And we're stirring this up. By now, if you're making the soup, I know your home smells wonderful. And with your kids coming in, or if you have a husband coming in, and they're smelling all that delicious smells, or friends coming over. Oh my goodness. Wanna get this a little bit, kind of a golden color. Now we're going to add this thickening to the soup in just a minute, slowly and stir at the same time. Then we will let the soup cook a little bit longer to get it thickened all throughout the soup. Okay, it's getting just about kind of the color that I like. We're going to turn the burner off, and it's a little bit of a light golden color. Always use your pot holders. The burner is off, so you don't get burned. Now, if you can see, the soup is boiling a little bit. That's what we want. And this, 
Oh, it has a wonderful fragrance. It's kind of a toasted fragrance. It's not as dark as if you're making gravy, but it's a little bit darker than when you first start. Now, I'm going to take the spoon out, and then I'm going to show you that we're going to gently use the whisk, and we're going to gently stir the thickening into the boiling soup. The, it's not a big, fast boil. It's kind of a light, light boil. Now it's starting to get a little bit too rambunctious. So I'm going to turn the burner down because we don't want it boiling over the stove. Okay, now we start stirring this in a little bit more. And what we're doing is we're blending the thickening, the flour and butter, if you use butter. We're blending it into the soup. Now I'm going to try to gently get what was left in there into the soup. And if you can see, it's kind of sizzling. And the fragrance is magnificent. Let me see if I can get more of this thickening in there. Okay. Now, there, the, the thickening is going to be boiling for about 10 minutes more. And as it boils, it'll make the soup a thicker texture and will be real, real creamy, real, real delicious. Now, when you're making the soup, uh, you can go right ahead and serve it. But what I like to do is to have the soup sit for maybe an hour or even more. And it, uh, I've heard the term is called melding. It helps the soup to blend the flavors together and kind of calm down and it just kind of settles. And we're going to let this boil a minute and then I will let you see how creamy and beautiful this soup is. Now, the day after, if you have any left over, uh, you're, it's been in the refrigerator overnight, and I leave it in the same pan so it'll stay nice and fresh and cool, and the lid is a really tight lid. But when you get it back out the next morning, it may be a little thicker than you want. You can always add a little bit more milk to kind of get the thickness that you want because overnight sometimes it gets too too thick. Now this is is very 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 creamy and you can see here and the juice of the soup is very very nice and creamy and you don't want it much thicker than that because it would be more like gravy than soup. But this is the cream. Now, what I'm going to add on the video is I'm going to say that it is a cream of broccoli soup with or without cheese. Now, if you want to add cheese to this, you add it right now. While the soup is thickening and just kind of slowly simmering, and you would add uh, a approximately be grated cheese, maybe two cups of cheese to this part here. But if you have some people in your family or friends that don't enjoy cheese much, then you have your grated cheese on the side. And then those who want cheese can add it to their hot bowl of soup later when they're at the table. And it is just as delicious that way. It really is. Now, if you could see even closer, I wish, there is a creamy, creamy, creamy soup. Now, we are going to turn this off. And we are going to put the lid back on. 
and let it melt or let it sit for at least an hour or more. Now, I'm going to end this video about right here because we have a continuing video about the buttery garlic biscuits with or without cheese. But if this is where you stop on the video and don't go into the cheese biscuits or the buttery garlic biscuits, uh, don't forget to push the little like button and also to the subscribe. If you've never subscribed, I hope you will subscribe to this channel. I would love to have you. You can always write me and I promise I answer. And I love to hear from everybody. I will be having some of this video on Instagram and on Facebook. And so you can also see it that way. But Karen, here is your soup. And in just a minute, we will have the buttery garlic biscuits with or without cheese. Thank y'all for watching. I've enjoyed our afternoon. And next we will have the biscuits. Okay. Thank you guys for all being with me. Bye-bye. I'm back for a quick little moment. And I did forget to tell you that at the end of, of making it thick, and if you add cheese to it, this is where you taste it. Now, the cheese may have made it enough salt flavor in it. Or if you don't add cheese, you may want to taste the soup to see if you need a little bit more of Lawry seasoning. So let's taste it and you're going to get to see me taste this. Yum, yum. Okay. Oh, that's delicious. It does need maybe about half of a tablespoon of Lawry since I didn't add the cheese. So, okay. Let me add about half a tablespoon and then we will stir it up and then we will taste it again to see if that has enough in it. Now, like I said, if you had added the cheese, it might have been all that you needed with the salt. But since I don't add the cheese right then, then we will taste it and see what we need to add more. If it needs a little bit more of the seasoning or if it's just fine. That will be up to your taste. So thank you for watching today. We will have our coming up video in just a minute for our biscuits. And thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and push the little like button. Thank you. Bye-bye.